so what is the outline of the presentation? I'm going to uh, basically focus on those budget institutions uh, which are needed for credible fiscal strategy and also show um, what are the links between budget institutions and fiscal outcomes and uh, what kind of institutions that we found are, uh, are, credib are, are needed for supporting uh, uh, credible fiscal strategy and what are the key design features. And then in the second part of my presentation, I'm going to quickly make a present, uh, uh, present to you uh, the results of the evaluations for G20 advanced emerging markets and for seven low-income countries, uh, which are Bolivia, Kenya, Mozambique, Myanmar, Uganda, Vietnam, and Zambia. As you can see, these countries cover a wide set of uh, 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 sort of groups which are in different parts of the world. And then, uh, in conclusion, I will then uh, list out the priorities for institutional reform uh, and uh, how one could uh, sequence those reforms. So as I said, we developed this evaluation framework in the department in the last four or five years. Uh, we've applied it to first to the G20 countries, and the paper that we did was launched only last month, uh, and, uh, and that uh, took us a lot of time because we had to consult the countries uh, and also um, uh, develop uh, the methodology, which was acceptable to all the member countries. Um, we applied that to some other uh, South, uh, southern European countries, uh, and these countries have different fiscal needs. Uh, some countries, uh, in the case of G20 advanced countries, there were a huge consolidation needs uh, in the last four or five years. Uh, so we needed to see what kind of institutions you need to be able to, uh, to, to, to uh, uh, understand the magnitude of consolidation and to implement a fiscal strategy uh, to achieve that uh, consolidation. And, and this, this framework is also uh, very much applicable uh, for countries where you want to ensure uh, fiscal discipline. So let me first establish the link uh, between uh, the, the institutions and fiscal outcomes. What this slide presents here is the, um, the results from uh, uh, PIFA scores of 50 countries. PIFA is a, is a tool which is used to uh, diagnose the weaknesses in the public financial management systems in, in, uh, in, the, in the countries. And this is a, a sort of an aggregate of the scores. What it's showing is that uh, if one looks at these scores of these 50 countries, the aggregate outturn um, in the budget as compared to the approved budget there's a huge deviation. And in some countries, the deviation is almost of up to 40%. Um, that, is, that applies for aggregate expenditures. And it also applies uh, to, uh, to the composition of expenditure. So this is suggestive of weakness in, uh, in, the, in uh, budget institutions in the uh, low-income countries. <coughs> um, so, uh, so what we... Uh, came up with is we thought there are three phases uh, in, for the fiscal strategy. Uh, one, the first phase is, is to understand what the fiscal challenge is. And then uh, the second stage is on the basis of this understanding, formulating a fiscal strategy. And the third stage is to implement uh, that strategy through the budget process. And, uh, to um, implement uh, this strategy, we came up with a list of 12 institutions uh, in each of the different phases of fiscal strategy, which are important uh, for uh, achieving fiscal policy goals. Now, before I go further, let me uh, give you some caveats. Uh, one is that this analysis uh, applies to a point in time, and the, and the reforms uh, in the budget area are, are, are ongoing. So in that sense, this analysis is, is static. Um, and then 
uh, what we have done is that um, underlying each of these uh, institutions are certain key questions which allow us uh, or anybody else to say whether some of these institutions exist in the country or not. And those questions range between three and six. In total, there are 52 questions. Now, what we have done is it's very hard to, uh, to, uh, to assign different weights to d different institutions. So we have assigned the same weight to all of these institutions. Of course, when you start talking to some uh, scholars and some people, they'll say, no, certain things are more important than others. But when we were uh, having discussions with countries, uh, we found that uh, there was not that much of an agreement on what is the most important institution for implementing a credible fiscal strategy. Therefore, we decided to give equal weight to all of these institutions. So what do we get by way of results? Uh, when we applied this to seven uh, low-income countries, uh, we have the results of the other uh, G20 advanced and emerging countries. As one can see, the blue uh, line gives the scores are the highest for the advanced G20 countries. Then comes the scores for the emerging markets. And then come the score in yellow for the low-income countries. But there are some interesting things which come out from here. One is that uh, the deviation vis-a-vis uh, -vis advanced and emerging markets for uh, low-income countries is the highest for the understanding and for the planning stage. In the implementation stage, the gaps are much, much smaller. And it will become clear as I go forward. So because of lack of time, I'm not going to focus too much on all the discrepancies that exist. I'm going to focus on six key institutions. One, macro fiscal forecasting, fiscal risk management, fiscal objectives, medium-term budget framework, parliamentary approval, and top-down uh, budget. Um, so let me now uh, explain in detail what the results show. Uh, the left-hand side uh, of this slide shows uh, the scores across three country groups. But our focus is on, on the low-income countries. And in the half of the low-income countries, uh, they publish medium-term forecasts in the budget. But these forecasts are without any quality control. Uh, and they only update those forecasts uh, during the budget year. Uh, and and uh, sorry, they don't update this forecast uh, throughout the budget year. And, and so these projections are, are not very useful in that sense. And uh, unlike the advanced countries, uh, None of the uh, low-income countries, or for that matter, emerging uh, market countries, make any projections for long-term fiscal uh, challenges that these countries face. As regards fiscal risk management, um, the main fiscal risks are not discussed or quantified in budget documents. Neither are the alternative medium-term budget scenarios produced. Um, in the majority of the low-income countries, uh, the government prepares a medium-term debt management strategy, but which is not very well specified. It does not um, take into account the risks that arise from the assets which are included there. Um, turning now to the, uh, on the formulation side of the fiscal strategy, um, about half of the countries uh, uh, specify some type of medium-term fiscal objective against which uh, the countries can uh, report their performance. And when I say objective, I'm talking about saying that there is um, a uh, budget deficit target. Um, in, in very few countries has this, been, this target been enshrined in law. So they have targets, but they, they are not enshrined in law. So there is no fiscal rule of that sort. 
Um, and in almost all these countries, exceptions are there uh, from this rule that, that uh, countries may be following. Um, on medium-term budget frameworks, which uh, uh, we all, at least sitting in the international institutions, uh, have been recommending countries to, uh, to go in for, about half of the countries have some type of multi-year multi estimates uh, for major categories of revenue expenditures. But, uh, but only in some of them uh, are, are they binding. In other words, in most of the countries, they are non-binding. Um, and most of the budget documents do not present consolidated summary of the fiscal impact of the new uh, revenue and expenditure measures. On the final uh, implementation stage, um, as regards top-down budgeting, um, almost all countries, there is a limit on both aggregate and sectoral or ministerial spending provided in the budget. But these ceilings are really respected. And in about half the countries, uh, major revenue expenditure decisions are often or sometimes taken outside the budget process. And that is uh, quite serious. As regards parliamentary approval, parliament typically does not endorse a medium-term fiscal target or objective. And in about half of the countries, annual budget is not approved in a top-down sequence. That is, the parliament does not first approve an overall annual budget for total revenues and expenditures. Now, how to prioritize reforms? Uh, in the case of low-income countries, uh, this is a, a a difficult task. It is a balance between ambition and realism. The capacity is, is poor. There are political economy constraints. There is weak governance. And of course, the challenge is to design a strategy which is very much country specific. Uh, there cannot be any rules that apply to all countries in all circumstances. But there is some guidance that can be sought from advanced uh, country experiences. And what are that guidance? Uh, what is that guidance from advanced economies? First, uh, we, we looked at uh, the, the evolution of budget reforms in the UK, in US, and in France in the uh, 19th century and early 20th century. What came out is that they did not attempt too many things at one time. Uh, they focused on basic elements of budgeting. Um, and they also recognize that some reforms take time to implement, and they have to be adapted to country circumstances. And, and one other lesson that came out is that one needs to take into account the views of stakeholders external to the finance ministry, because in many countries, uh, the line ministries tend to oppose any reform that the finance ministry may be proposing. And finally, uh, this may require the reforms that we suggest in budget institution, a reorganization of Ministry of Finance that comes in from the experience of the UK Treasury, where it was reformed in 1970s, and then again in 1990s, and then again more recently in 2010. Um, I'm just going to take another minute or two to just lay out a few uh, things on the strategy. Um, so I have identified seven uh, budget institutions which I think uh, countries should focus on uh, in terms of going forward. And one is on the fiscal reporting, which is absolutely critical uh, to be able to formulate a good fiscal strategy. One is to have uh, the expanded coverage of the annual financial statement and ensure that this is then audited by external uh, parties. And the financial statistics that are reported should be produced by an independent office in line with international standards. The second part is the forecasting and the fiscal risk. Including a comprehensive information about fiscal risks in the budget is important, particularly about PPPs. We recently estimated the total capital stock in relation to GDP for advanced emerging and low-income countries. What we found is that in the low-income countries, a lot of uh, public-private partnerships are being entered into, and this is, this is fine because it's making up the, uh, the, the falling capital stock in a number of countries. However, it also means that there is fiscal risk that has to be taken on board in these countries. 
Um, this next thing is to produce and publish macroeconomic forecast along with the, 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 the uh, related assumptions and also have a medium term forecasting with medium term uh, budget scenarios. Finally, two more things on the, uh, on the formulating of credible fiscal strategy. As, as regards fiscal objectives, one should adopt a medium term objective and regularly report on the fiscal performance against the stated objective. As regarding the medium term budget framework, it should be simple and developed gradually. And finally, uh, on the intergovernmental fiscal relations, one has to make sure that the all levels of government bear the f burden of, of uh, fiscal strategy and there are no moral hazards of fiscal risk uh, entailed in, in, the, in the fiscal. Uh, uh. Just the last slide, um, uh, as regarding uh, the implementing the strategy, uh, I would focus on, uh, on top-down budgeting. Here the issue is having ex ante limits on both aggregate and sectoral uh, spending uh, at an early stage uh, and making sure that those limits are realistic. And then changing the parliamentary procedures to, allow, to follow a top-down sequence. And finally, the budget execution um, uh, must ensure that there are restrictions for overspending and, and, uh, uh, and there are limits on multi-annual expenditure commitments. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Sandy. I guess it's off to a very good start. So next we have uh, Nuka.